on today's episode of Moto Cheese. What kind of bike do you have? Dang! You got shocks, pegs, lucky. <laughs> got the new Jansno X70 dual battery 750 watt e bike. Let's check it out. The X50 performs so well. Can't wait to see what this dual battery X70 will do. We're all charged up. Put it up to five here. Let's see what we can get into today, boys. Can't catch me. About 25 miles an hour on that dirt road. I don't know if this, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see it. Ready? Go. Five, 10, 15, 20. This slight uphill here. Twenty-six. Of course, it's twenty-seven. This isn't perfectly flat. Almost twenty-eight. Watch up, kitty. Watch up, kitty. Rear suspension and front suspension works pretty darn good. What was that? Hear that whistle. It handles well. Take our time down the sidewalk here. Someone lost a rag. Maybe we'll try to make it my parents' house. It's about 15 miles. She wasn't looking. That's dangerous. Woo! That one wasn't looking either. That's probably why I'm supposed to be on the other side of the road. Just me. I'm gonna sneak by you. How you doing? He's probably hating on e-bikes about now. Or wishing he had one. This road crossing up here is gonna be really tough. I probably should have crossed back there. Oh, there we are, boys. Had my blinker on the whole time. They should put an audible beep, 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 so you know it's on. Ah, got in front of her. Five miles already. Wow, I'm gonna beat this guy in the corner, ready? Caught up with him. He was scared. Bike's loosening up a little bit. We're doing almost 29 now. Suspension does pretty good actually. I mean it's a little stiff but nothing like having no suspension. Oh almost 30 miles an hour boys. 30.1. I'm gonna cut over to Seven Rivers Road. So far so good boys. I think it rides pretty good. And the seat's not too bad. The saddle seat think would be uncomfortable after a while but the only downfall of a saddle seat is if you're pedaling you can't raise it up so it's harder on pedaling this has the Harley bars they slope back I have a rear view mirror on my helmet that's a must if you're riding on a road something went out of sidewalk for sure once the wind gets in your ears when you're doing
doing 20 plus and you can't really hear anything coming up behind you. I know a little trail shortcut up here, we'll take that. Let's see what it does off road. There's a 10 mile mark. Still shows all five bars. Here's the trail. Let's see how she does. Now if I was trail riding more, I would let a little air out of the tires. Put about 15. Things are pretty good in the sand now. Even with the high pressure tires, I mean, 20 pounds is max. Of course, lower pressure is better in the sand. Just that one clunk out of the forks on a rebound on that one bump. It does the trail as well. Well, that's it for the trail. That did pretty good actually, huh? Yeah, this road's a little dangerous. 55 miles an hour. What the heck was that? Ah, I remember to turn my blinker off that time. Alright, so it looks like 12 miles. And we use one bar of battery. Now, I don't know. Let me see. I'll shut this bottom one off. Yeah, see it's using the top battery right now. No, no it ain't. It's reading both and doing whatever the average is. So we use one bar out of five then. 13 miles. Don't forget, we're wide open the entire time. You could always keep that bottom battery off and then turn it on when you run out of power on the other one. There is a little bit of lag from when you hit the throttle and let off the throttle about one second. Fourteen miles almost to my parents' driveway. The garage is open, they have to be home. Oh, there's Tut Tut. What are you doing, Tut Tut? What are you doing? Organizing? I get out of the house, I put up a shelf. A few moments later. Hey, Tut Tut. I'll see you later. Oh, 14 miles back home. Three bars on a battery out of five. And the handle's pretty good. My front brake makes a little noise sometimes. Now I'm gonna have to put my GPS on because I want to try to go back a different way. So I've never been this way. Let's see how good this holder is, huh? Least amount of time on highways, the better. Am I right? Uh, down to two bars. So it says I'm doing 23. Not quite one mile an hour fast. The speedometer on this, that's pretty close. Not bad. Left my darn blinker on again. Go left here. Made it back to Rock Crusher. Not gonna meet many interesting people today, the route that I went. And that's why they call it Rock Crusher Road. They used to crush a bunch of rocks. 20 miles we went. Two bars out of five batteries left. Yeah, these e-bikes are fun, man. Never thought I'd like them as much as I do. They're quiet and they're fun to ride and you can still get exercise if you pedal. Although I'm not because I'm trying to see how long this battery is going to last. Yeah, it's a big mother trucker there. Uh-oh, sheriff's going after somebody. I'll let this tractor trailer go by. Here's another fire truck. Mm. I know, I'm on the wrong side. Don't want to be like that guy. Man, I wouldn't feel safe on that bike lane. Holy cow. 8,000 for a golf cart. 
I wonder if that's battery or gas. KOA campground. Don't seem like they're getting a lot done. Hang on, we're gonna have a knee dragger. What do you think? Take the power lines back? Yeah. 25 miles, still holding it two bars. I don't know how that second battery calculates or how it works, but if we don't run it out, we'll just keep pushing it. Technically should do about 40 miles. Maybe for someone that's like 110 pounds, or maybe it will. We'll just keep driving it until it runs out. Just stay a little more local so I only have to pedal a few miles instead of 20 miles. <laughs> Oh, there you go, one bar, 25 miles, almost 26, oh no, went back up to two bars, must have been because of that little hill. This sand's going to wear it out, you watch. This really wears down the battery quick when you're on sand, or dirt, anything other than pavement, you're going to consume a lot more battery. Huh, it's going between one and two batteries bars so the other battery must kick in that must be what's going on huh it goes one battery then it goes back up to two I well, made it home Let's see how this headlight works at night. Oh, I had it on the whole time. <laughs> Still got two bars of battery. We'll finish this battery off tomorrow. That boat's still for sale, boys. Shocks are doing their job. Jansno definitely has better headlights of the e-bikes that I've tested. We're going to take it out tomorrow and see how far we can go before this battery dies. That's what it looks like at night. So let's kill the battery on this. Still has two bars of battery. I think it senses the voltage and keeps switching back and forth between the two. I did get a little rain this morning. Nice doggies, I think they like the bicycle. More e-bike fans. I almost like this saddle seat better than a regular bike seat. So as the battery gets down, there is a slight performance hit for your speed and your torque. But I'm still doing 26, 27 on a flat. 28 miles, still holding that one bar. Once it starts to flash, we will head home. More e-bike fans. You can see it on Motor Cheese YouTube. 29 miles, still holding that one bar. Still doing 27.8 miles an hour. Another fan. YouTube Motor Cheese. Hmm, never been down this road. Uh oh. That's a big Marmaduke dog. More places that the road used to go straight through, you could see it way over there. Huh, that's amazing. Every time I let off, it goes back to two bars. Check that out. Toyota. Oh, there's an old vet in there. Two vets. Jeez. No one's been there for a while. Wonder who owns that. Ooh, he could jump that if he wanted. 31 miles, still holding that one bar battery. 32 miles. 17 is supposed to be cruise, but cruise does not work on this, so that's that. A little bit of sand. This will wear a battery down faster than anything. Woo! And it is sugary sand. I'm surprised this battery's still holding up. We just went down to no bars. 
could be, oh yeah, just hit 34 miles. So you might get 35 miles. And don't forget that was wide open throttle, no pedal assist, really, maybe twice I did a little bit of a stint. So you went 35 miles. Of course, now that I'm not on the throttle, we have one bar battery. So you could probably squeak a few more miles out. Maybe 36, 37. And we have 43.5 volts left on the battery. Let's just say 36 miles on a dual battery. Let's charge her back up. Definitely redesigned frame from the X50. Two batteries. Let's see what comes in the box. Manual. All right, it's got turn signals. One wall charger, 54.6 volts, two amps. Front fender. Make sure we put this one on the right way this time, boys. Another charger, because it is dual battery. Exact same, 54.6 volts, 2 amps. An air pump. A front headlight. Looks similar to the one that's on the X50, which is very bright. And the horn is built into the headlight. Some screws with rubber washers. A bike lock. A phone holder stamp wrenches and they're off the Swiss Army folding tool kit nut cover that's what she said and the pedals let's get this kickstand on left pedal left hand thread definitely have to get another wrench this is not going to give you enough it'll, it'll get you together but you definitely want to put a bigger wrench on for those pedals right side right hand thread Looks like one of the workers got an injury. I'm not bleeding. These are painted aluminum rims. Pretty light. 6,000 RS bearing on both sides. 160 millimeter disc. Definitely gotta put air in it when you're done. There's a larger spacer on one side than the other. Plastic keeper. So the bigger spacer goes on the opposite side of the rotor. The smaller spacer goes on the rotor side. Make sure you put those little locks in so your front tire don't fall off if you're pulling a wheelie. I'm going to put these handlebars on so we can flip it upside down when we're and do some adjustments on the brakes. Center those neural marks. Tighten these up. Make sure you go around several times. They do look pretty straight. Make sure this neck is tight. It is. Not a bad idea to check everything for tightness. That's what she said. So now we'll flip this upside down since it's easier to adjust the disc brakes and everything. See, it's dragging. Hold it with that little stamped wrench. That's pretty good there. That's not too bad. It is dragging a little. As soon as I use them, it'll wear right in. Get this front fender on. This way. Psych! I know, it goes the other way. Get the headlight on. It goes like that. That's what these rubber washers and screws are for. That rubber washer goes in between. That's number three Phillips, but we will use the supplied, it's like a number one, or it could be metric standard. Tighten these up a bit more. Yeah, that's better. Find a yellow connector, line up the two arrows, push it till it snaps. Now for our turn signals, let's see which one is what here. Three different sets of keys. That oval one would be for the ignition. The Chrysler looking key. This is for the small battery. And this would be for the larger battery. Put them right here so I don't lose them. You turn the key on. See which blinker does what. Alright, so this is for the right one. It's a little big for that, but let it pop. We are done with exception of this phone holder, which I don't trust a lot of these phone holders. Let's see what it's made of. Because if you watch my other reviews, I almost lost my phone on the X50. 
On the road, you probably don't have to worry much about it, but if you're going to go off road, you definitely do. It's not bad, and it's decent that it does all the corners. Yeah, maybe we'll put it on for ships and gargoyles. Maybe on a road I'll use it, but off-road, I just don't trust it. Sometimes they have those little stretchy nets that go over them. They make it a little safer. It's the S23. Tighten it there and then lock it. Might work pretty good. And there's a USB under here, so you can charge your phone while you're riding. That's good. That knob won't come off. That locking knob. Let's adjust these brake levers and stuff. I always adjust them sitting on the bike. You don't want to up because it'll fatigue your hand and too far down will fatigue your hand. Tighten up the speedometer. LCD control. We are done. Took me a little over an hour to complete that. So assembly isn't too bad. I think it's kind of neat looking actually. In the pictures it looked a little weird. But in person it actually doesn't look bad. If that makes any sense. Dual charging. There's one. Dual charging. A few moments later. One battery's done. The other one's still completing. Gets a little warm. So not only does it have a USB-A plug right there, it also has a USB plug here. That's pretty awesome. And I did notice this battery has an on and off switch. So if you forget to turn this one on and you run that battery out, don't forget you got to switch this on. Or you can keep them both on because it will use one battery at a time. There's a headlight button right here. Your turn signals. Left and right. Both of your brakes will turn on the brake light. Also, when you push your brake, it will disable the electric motor from running. That's a safety feature. We have a seven speed Shimano gear selector. And a twist throttle. And the ignition key, of course. Mechanical rear and front disc brakes. We'll see how comfortable the seat is. Oil dampened front forks. 20 by 4.0 fat tires. Chow Yang, 3 millimeter hippo skin plus Aramid FLOC breaker. So we're gonna check the tire pressure because I know it's low, but the maximum inflatable pressure is 20 PSI, which is good if you wanna save on battery and you're mostly on the road. You're gonna to wanna to soften it up a little bit more if you're off-road. They do make a rear rack option, which would be a great idea. Now this does weigh 96 pounds because it has two batteries and it has a carbon steel frame. I'd almost consider this an e-motorcycle. What do you guys think? And it is a moped tire. It did run a USB cable over through this spiral loom and back over here. So when I put my phone in I can plug it in. So right now, top speed is 24 kilometers. We're gonna switch that to miles per hour. Power to unit on, hit both buttons to get into settings. That's your dim settings. Three is the highest, one, two, three. I'll keep that on three. PO2 is your kilometers or miles per hour. PO3 is your voltage for your battery. PO4 is your inactivity timer. PO5 is just how many assist levels you have. PO6 is your wheel diameter. PO7 is 0001. PO8 is your power level. PO9 is your start mode. P10 is your riding mode setting. 
P11 is 0003. P12 is your acceleration. P13. P14 is 0015. P15 is 39. P16 is to zero your trip odometer. P17 is cruise mode. P18 is 0, 0100. P19 is all zeros. P20 is all zeros. Hold the up and down button to get back to normal mode. If you hold the down arrow, it'll give you a push assist if it's on a steep hill or if your battery's getting real low. That's your speed, that's your assist level. Also works for your throttle control speed. That's your battery level. This is your odometer. That's your trip. That's your voltage. Pretty nice LED. You hit your brakes, you see a little brake icon show up on the corner there. So now that we got it to miles an hour, let's see how top speed is. 15. So to get this to go top speed, unplug that wire that's connected to the controller. Took the side panel off and it looks like that's the wire right there for the speed limit. So let's disconnect that and try it. So you do not have to remove anything. You can just reach in there and unplug it. Now that we got that unplugged and the bike back together, let's see what we get for top speed. Woo, 35.3 boys. So it didn't do too bad. One mile per amp hour roughly. And I was probably averaging at least 25 miles per hour. I did go through the sand a little bit. I did the power lines. Now if I stayed doing 15 miles an hour, I probably could have almost doubled what we did on battery life. Speed affects the battery tremendously. And of course the terrain does too. It's a little heavy, but that's because it has a high carbon steel frame. But the bike is built pretty well. The suspension's a little stiff, but it does help a lot. I do like the saddle seat, although I didn't think I would. So I think it's a pretty decent deal with the price. And maybe they'll give me some discounts for you guys. Check down in the description below. I'll have all the links and everything for you. And thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Hit that bell if you want new notifications on new videos. Links for products to use are in the description and on MotoCheese.com. Thanks for watching.